Hello guys, how's it going? So yeah, just got back from Snowdonia, absolutely loved it. Um, if you haven't checked the vlogs out, I'll leave the link at the top there so you can go and check them out. Um, yeah, brilliant time there, I feel completely relaxed and de-stressed now, which is just what I needed. So yeah, today we're gonna to be talking about how to create a HDR panorama. So I'm gonna kind of split it into two. First of all, I'm gonna talk about some tips and tricks, how I set the camera up. And then the second part will be how I edit the images in Lightroom using the new feature, which has just come out in the new update. So that's really cool. So if you're just interested in the editing, then I'll leave the timestamp in the description. Click on that, it goes straight to the editing. If you're interested in the tips and tricks before, stick around and we'll go through the whole thing. That'd be great. So stick around till the end guys as well, because I'm gonna be telling you how you can get your photographs featured on the channel as well. So yeah, stick around to the end and we'll talk about that in a bit more detail. Okay, let's go and get a bit more comfortable in the studio. See you in a minute. So guys, if you enjoy the content and want to see more photography tutorials and landscape photography vlogs, then please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell button and you'll be notified next time I make an upload. It's better, it's better. So yeah, there's a few things that we can do to make sure we get the best shot possible. But first of all, I think it's always a good thing to think about why we want to take a panoramic shot in the first place. Now for me, it's generally because I want to use a telephoto lens. So take these two images for example. The first one was shot on my drone. And as you can see, although it's quite a nice photograph, the mountains in the background get lost because they're quite small. Obviously it's a very wide shot. So um, what I wanted to do was focus on those mountains and bring those closer into the frame and compress the distance between the foreground mountains and the background mountains. So make it look a bit more dramatic. So we can do this with a telephoto lens, but obviously using the telephoto lens, our field of view is gonna be a lot more narrow. So this is when the panoramic shot comes into its own really. So we can move our camera through the scene from left to right and capture a number of images and then stitch those images together in Lightroom. And it also brings with it its own set of problems as well. So using filters can be problematic, using uh, graduated filters, also polarizers as well because you're moving the camera. So I, I personally would avoid using filters for a panoramic shot, but that's just my personal preference and use a HDR if, we, if we've got a high dynamic range within the scene. So for this shot, it was quite a large dynamic range because we've got a lot of shadow area and some bright spots on the mountains. The clouds are quite bright. So a bracketed exposure here works really well. So uh, what I normally do is do, for this shot, I did a shot under uh, exposed by one stop then my properly exposed shot and then a shot overexposed by one stop. Um, so that just gives me a larger dynamic range. Now, I think some people can get a little bit confused with HDR because in the past HDR, we've seen those over-processed tone mapped images that just look really fake. But I think done, if it's done correctly, we can get a really natural looking shot that's very pleasing to the eye. And all we're doing really is increasing the dynamic range of the camera. So I'm all for using filters where I can, but if it's not possible, um, you know, HDR is a very, very good option. Uh, and with this uh, blending mode we've got now in Lightroom, um, it's, it's even better for doing panoramic shots. So um, let's talk about how to set the camera up first of all. So probably the first thing that you should do is make sure your tripod is absolutely 100% level because uh, by just doing this will increase your flexibility when you get to stitching the photographs together. So that would be my sort of number one key point. Um, and if you're using your camera vertically as well, I would definitely recommend getting an L bracket such as this. Um, so if you're not familiar with L brackets, um, L brackets just to allow you to uh, basically change the orientation of your camera on your tripod head, um, but keeping the lens basically over the center of your tripod, so that pivot point that allow you to keep your lens over that point. And that allows stitching the images uh, to be a lot more accurate. So um, let me just quickly show you if you're not familiar. So here we have my, my ball head here. Um, obviously, if we're in landscape orientation, I can just attach it on like so. Um, and obviously you can see the center of the lens over the center of the tripod mount. And then if I want to do it vertical, I can just switch that around, lock it down back onto the tripod. And again, we're, we're back to that perfectly um, aligned shot over the top of the tripod. So when we're rotating that through our panoramic shot, we're, we're, we're pivoting on that one axis as opposed to 
if you don't have an L bracket, the, the other option is obviously to tilt your head round. But as you can see, we've got a, a more sweeping motion when we rotate the head. And, and that's what's basically going to do when you stitch your images together, it's kind of give you a tapered uh, shot, which you'll end up cropping a lot out or obviously expanding the image and you're going to lose quality and obviously a lot of your image while you do that. So yeah, I definitely recommend getting an L bracket if you want to do vertical panoramic shots. So I would recommend bringing the level up on the back of your LCD screen just to check your level or you can get a little level for your hot shoe mount or a lot of tripods will have a level built into them. So just spend a bit of time getting it level. So let's just talk about how you set the camera up. Now, the next thing you really need to do is make sure everything is in manual mode. So I'm talking about ISO in manual, I'm talking about shutter speed in manual, I'm talking about your aperture in manual, and also your white balance in manual. You need to set all of these up to make sure they do not change as you take the images as you move through the scene from left to right or right to left, whichever way you're going. Um, the last thing you want is the middle shot, for example, to be a stop more overexposed or the white balance is changed. It, it would just mean a whole world of pain when you go back to try to edit the photos. So everything needs to be dialed in, in manual. Now, the next thing I would say is um, probably you want to turn your uh, image stabilization off when you've got it mounted on the tripod. That's going to take away any vibrations you might get within the lens or the camera. Um, the next thing you need to do as well, especially if you're using a telephoto lens, is to either use a shutter release or you will need to use the timer built in with your camera. Now I generally use the timer. Um, if I'm really quite close in, like I was with the shot that we're going to be blending together, what I'll tend to do is use the 10 second timer. Now you do have to be a little bit careful with this because if you've got a lot of movement in the clouds, then this can cause problems stitching. So if you've got slow moving clouds like I did on this occasion, the 10 second timer is well worth using because it will give you time to make sure your camera is completely stable before it takes the image because a little bit of camera shake, um, say at 150 mil, will be quite significant and will reduce the image quality quite a lot. So I definitely recommend doing that. So use a 10 second timer if you can, if not, two second timer or just use a shutter release and kind of gauge it for yourself where you think you might be right. So, so they're my shooting tips, if you like. Um, now what we're going to do is go over to the computer, get all of these images and put them together and see how well Lightroom's new feature does in blending these images together. Okay, guys, let's jump over to the computer now. So here we are in Lightroom and here you can see we have our 15 bracketed exposures. So this is our first exposure and it's the base exposure, the correctly exposed. As you can see, the shadows are quite dark. The next image is our overexposed shot. And as you can see, some of the highlights in the water are blown out. And here we can see our underexposed shot where we can see we have all of the details in the highlights. So blending these images together will give us a really nice even exposure. So yeah, first of all, we're gonna select all of our images and then we're going to right click and we are gonna to go to photo merge and then the new feature at the bottom here is HDR panorama. So I'm gonna click that and let Lightroom do its thing. Sometimes this takes a few seconds depending on how many images you have got. So when our image has been merged, we get our preview and we can select three options here, we've got spherical, cylindrical and perspective and it's just about choosing the one that works best for you. Now if I choose spherical here, it's not actually blending the images at all, it's uh, only giving me half of the panorama. So I've chosen perspective and, and now it's just about um, adjusting boundary warp and auto crop to give me the best looking shot I can get really. And this is our preview. So once we're happy with that, you can either create a stack, so it's gonna put all of your images and the final image into a stack, or you can deselect that and it will just add it separately. So um, I've already created a stack because I have already edited this shot before, so I'm gonna uncheck that and I'm gonna merge these images together. So now we'll just let Lightroom do its thing and hopefully it will spit out a decent end result. So here we are and we have our image that Lightroom's churned out for us and overall it looks pretty good. I'm just going to go into the develop module now and yeah, take a bit of a closer look at this image. Yeah, so as we can see, the sky is pretty much spot on. 
and there's no there's no kind of lines or marks or different exposures at all within the image apart from this area in the water here which it struggled with and I can understand that you know because there's lots of horizontal lines in the water and I think maybe it's focusing on getting these areas correct and it struggled with that but we can fix that in Photoshop without too much hassle so I'm not going to worry too much about that now but what I'm going to do now is just apply some light edits to this image to uh, improve the overall look of the shot so at the minute you can't really tell this is sand uh, so yeah this is one of the areas I want to bring out and actually make it look like it is sand as opposed to water so I'm just going to adjust the exposure on that and also the temperature of that as well just so it looks more like sand and less like water that probably do it um, overall I'm going to increase the exposure to around about somewhere there plus 60 ish uh, contrast we're going to bump up a bit to plus 14 I'm just going to bring out some of the shadow detail somewhere there and the whites I'm just going to bring up to around about plus 29 something like that just give it a bit more punch and the blacks down to add in a bit more contrast somewhere there um, it's a bit hazy but I do want to retain some of that haze but I also want to bring out a bit more of the contrast as well so I'm just going to bring that up, you have to be a bit careful with the dehazer because it can look a bit false sometimes just make the image a bit more vibrant so I'm just going to boost that up a little bit and also saturation somewhere there I think and already the image is looking a lot better so pretty cool and next I'm just going to put on a, a medium curve just add in a bit of contrast and I think maybe now that's just overdone the saturation a bit so I'm just going to bring that back down a touch and maybe the vibrance back down a bit and overall yeah I'm looking pretty good now pretty pretty pleased with this shot so we need to fix these areas here um, and we'll do that in Photoshop now what I would say, I like to sharpen my images in Photoshop as well. I think it gives a better result. So always make sure you've got your sharpening and noise reduction turned down before you import the file into Photoshop to do those adjustments. So to bring it into Photoshop, just right click and edit in, edit in Photoshop. That's going to open Photoshop for us, bring our file in and then we can do some selective editing. So here we are, we have our image opened in Photoshop now. I'm just going to increase the size of it and take a quick look at this problem area down here. Now as you can see, the, the sand is a little bit kind of wobbly here and these lines don't quite line up. Um, I guess there's a couple of ways we could do it. We could maybe do it with a clone stamp tool, so we're going to try that first. We're going to duplicate our layer by pressing Ctrl and J and then come over to the clone stamp tool and see if we can just kind of feather this in a bit with the clone stamp tool um, we might be able to kind of just doesn't look too bad I don't think it'll be too noticeable if we, if we just do it like that Yeah, it's pretty good I think. There's a few areas here that are a bit wobbly and maybe we could sort those out with liquify, but I don't think I'm gonna bother for this. It's not really that noticeable. So yeah, all in all, it's pretty pretty good how this image has turned out. I maybe do a little bit of selective dodging and burning, but um, I don't think I'm gonna bother. So yeah, in terms of sharpening, um, we'll just uh, flatten that, duplicate the layer again, go to filter, sharpen and sharp mask now I always like to do the sharpening at the end depending on the size of the image because um, for an image for Instagram for example uh, 1080 by 1080 we might only want to sharpen the amount around about 35 percent but for an image of this size because we've got huge file size we're going to probably want to bring that up to maybe around I don't know maybe 200 something like that to get a really nice sharp image so yeah, it's always various depending on the file size, so I definitely recommend 
um, you do your sharpening right at the end. Yeah, it looks nice. Now you may want to decide not to sharpen the sky and only sharpen the landscape. Now it's dead easy to do. Once you've got your sharpened layer, just pop a pop a layer mask on there. Hit your brush tool and literally just paint black into the sky. I'm just doing this dead roughly. You can do it with luminosity masks and whatnot, but uh, make sure your opacity is set to 100. And just like, brush the sky out. So foreground sharpened now and the sky isn't, so we can just have a quick look just to make sure. We can see that's nice and sharp. And that's obviously without the layer and that is with the layer. So yeah, all in all, pretty cool. Happy with this shot. Um, another thing I like to do, just flatten that down. Another thing I like to do is make my background white because uh, Instagram, my website, backgrounds are white. So it's always nice just to have a quick look at the shot. So it looks like with a white background, um, I might then decide to change some of the tones or colors or maybe the white balance or something, depending on how I think it looks against the white. So yeah. So all in all, pretty happy with how Lightroom tackles this HDR panoramic. So guys, I hope you got something from that. I think it's a welcome feature to the Lightroom software and I'll definitely be using it again in the future. So let me just talk about what I mentioned at the beginning of the episode and, and that is how you can get your photographs featured on the channel. So it's pretty straightforward. All you need to do is go onto Instagram, give me a follow. It's at Ian underscore worth. And if you use the hashtag Ian worth, I'll be able to have a look through those photographs at the end of the month and I'll pick two or three out and I'll feature them on my channel. I'm not going to critique them. I'm just going to pick a couple out that I like. I'll leave the links to your Instagram feeds and I'll also put them in a story as well with a link back to your feed. So hopefully it'll help you guys out and give you a bit more exposure too. So that'd be really cool. Be really good to kind of link up with you guys on there as well. So yeah, go and check my feed out, give us a follow and use the hashtag Ian Worth in your photos. See if you can get your work featured on the channel. So that's pretty much it for today, guys. Thank you so much again for dropping by. If you enjoy the content, give me the thumbs up. That helps massively. If you think others might like it, feel free to share it. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I'll catch you next time. See you later, guys.